Welcome, sports fans, to another edition of the DC Sports Huddle. As always, it is sponsored by our friends at MGM National Harbor. For the latest in Washington sports, visit MGM National Harbor and experience a sports fan's paradise. I am Rob Woodfork. Dave Preston apparently going to cater a holiday event immediately after this. Nice. And That's George Wallace, stuff. my fellow Grinch, also in the house. Now, That's not really fair. Holiday it's not spirit, fair. You're everybody. Not a Grinch too? I don't think I'm a Grinch. I mean, not really. I can be. No, but here's the thing. The Grinch is misunderstood because yeah. the Grinch doesn't have a problem with Christmas. He has a problem with people. people. Oh, yeah, people yeah. are the worst. So, yeah, we're, that's... We're, it's, we're like like... Fe- it's like Festivus. I got a lot of problems with people. <laughs> uh, well, right. good night, everybody. One, one, one of our yeah. problems, Taylor Heineke. Two turnovers oh, now, in the game against around. the Giants. Now what do you mean coming, coming around? around? I've, I've never been teamed Heineke. But uh, Heineke with a pair of turnovers in the game. Uh, We can talk all day and night about the, and we're not going to, I can assure you, we are not going to talk all day and night about the referees, even though they were, they were abysmal. That entire last sequence in the game was an absolute stain on the officiating profession. So we don't need to delve into that. The bottom line is you come out of the game, you get the loss. Now you're having to win out and probably get a (laughs) bunch of help in order to make the playoffs. So you go to San Francisco on a short week. The number one defense in the land, uh, number one against the run, number one uh, in yardage allowed, points allowed. No chance Washington wins, right? Welcome to the NFL, my friends, where the <laughs> obvious is never going to happen and the serious is sublime. Yeah. I think I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Washington were to win this game, with one exception. Kyle Shanahan <laughs> is the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. I don't know for certain, but I'm sure his dad, Mike Shanahan, is still angry at Dan Snyder for canning him nine years ago. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Shanahan has been looking at tape of Washington (laughs) all season long, helping his son Kyle deliver a game plan so he can get a game ball like he did when Washington lost to San Francisco just uh, three or four years ago. Why okay. are you angry? Yeah, I know. Why are you I'm not angry? angry. I just think it's going to be a fun uh, Saturday. We have, oh, they're Mike. Never, they're, we have they, Mikes. Kyle's yeah. never going it, to... It's Look, it went from the whole... We're not trading Kirk Cousins to Kyle Shanahan because yeah. it's Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the fact that Trent Williams is there is great, by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's always going to want to beat Washington. I mean, right. it's just the way it is. And he's got a, he's got a good team. He's got a great defense. And... You can't, you know, the, the the Heineke quarterback situation, you can't put Carson Wentz in this week because that D-line is going to just tee off on him. He can't Absolutely. move. Mm. Uh, you, 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 so you're sacrificing Taylor. Who gives you a better chance in the pocket? We know that. He can move around. Um, but I just don't know if they're going to have enough. I mean, sure they can win the game. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it, it's still Brock Purdy. It's still it's still a rookie quarterback. Right. But I'm, I'm going to say this. I think Washington does win the game. Okay. Okay. Now we've talked about you it a lot. We want. talk about we talk about it every week. Yes, the deficit in rest. Washington uh, wins when they're short. Um, yeah. They get the short end of that stick. He's got a point there. When they have the advantage in that category, they lose. That's yeah. exactly what happened Did with you... the Giants game. They're coming off a bye. You you have every reason in the world to win that game. It's played at home. They're doing NBC doing the montages with all your players and talking about your past and everything's tilted Washington's way. I don't know if you watched uh, beforehand. Everybody on that uh, set. Yeah, we saw it up on the. Yeah, yeah. yeah except for Tony Washington Dungy. Washington <laughs> across the board. But the only reason Dungy took the Giants was because he didn't want to jinx it like right. they had the yeah. week before. Right. So everybody's on Washington. They lose in those instances. Nobody gave them a chance in Philadelphia. And what happened? So I think the I think the blueprint is going to be pretty much the same for all intents and purposes. You're gonna have to take care of the football. Mm-hmm. And Scott Turner, I'll talk to you real quick. Scott Turner, you're gonna have to coach the game of your life. You understand? The game of your life. None of this stuff like you've been doing in the red zone. None of this. You have to. He's going to have Absolutely. to dial it up to five. Because you can't, look, you have to give it to uh, Robinson. Robinson 30 times. Uh-huh. 30 times. Yeah. Now, granted, San Francisco, number one against the run, number one points, number one. But if you have to use Robinson as a blunt force object for a while, and then that opens things up for you to hit him with one of those uh, gadget plays that he loves to run, and sidebar, Stop using Curtis Samuel yeah. like he's Debo Samuel. Yeah, no. Those are not no. the same guys. They're not related, I don't think. So there's there's no reason to keep running him, running him. Yeah. Use him as a receiver. That's what he is. So Scott Turner, please. 
game of your life. That's the only chance you have because you don't, this is how guys, this is how his father built his reputation, by the way. Sometimes you have to take some lesser pieces and create something really good out of them. And I know he had those great teams in Dallas and all of that, but you know, Scott Turner, he's the key here. If they are able to put together a game plan that um, hits on some of those, and you're gonna have to do it in the passing game because yes. the, the running lanes aren't gonna be there. Right, right. So you're gonna have to get something, uh, the, the Heineke magic is going to have to be there and the defense has to, if San Francisco scores 20 points, this is, there's no chance Washington wins. I think this is going to be a 17-13 kind of game that Washington wins because of Heineke magic and because the defense takes turns Brock Purdy over a couple of times. You're angry. Tell me I'm You're crazy. Angry yeah. Too. I wow. wasn't as loud as him, though. You're yeah. angry. This is the holidays. You the coffee. Sit, you sit on this side. Keep your, on that the side coffee. of the table. There is not coffee. Why are you up. angry? I'm not Look, angry at all. I, it's It's... I'm just mad at Scott Turner. I, I can see that. <laughs> I mean, you know, look, and, and the <clears throat> the uh, Brian Robinson situation kind of calling out the coaches a little bit this week about play calling. And look, he, he was mad. He back a little bit. He, he right. did. Yeah. And, and, and look, I was right there when he said it. I didn't take it as he was trashing Scott Turner. Right, right, right. But, he's, I mean, he wants the ball. He's moving. He's carrying eight dudes with him every time he carries the ball. Feed him the ball. They go one and three in the red zone. Can't have that. One for ten on third down. Can't have that. Those are game. Those are those are just game crushers. Right. So, Kayvon have, Thibodeau having the, the, the game of his All life. Star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He they're going to have to play. No, that. they're going to have to. Play. Yeah, of course they can win the game. I mean, if, because every time you think this team's not, then they die. Then and and yeah. something crazy happens. It's just I, I don't. And I do think Heineke gives you the best chance this week to win the game. This I week. will say that. I will say as hard as I've been on him, I will say that because of his able ability to get out and, and scramble and make, make things happen. But he's not going to beat them, you know, with his arm. It's no, gonna he's not going to go for 300 yards yeah. and four touchdowns. But I'm, I'm going to say this. The, the, the Heineke magic <coughs> has to be there. That's why you're starting him this week is because you have to ride the Heineke magic until the Heineke magic runs out. I think it's it going to it, yeah. it's going to I, run out. Yeah, it's I, going to run out. I, I, yes. And if this week is it, then so be it. You have to dance with. I learned this in high school the mm. hard way. You got to dance with the girl that brought uh, that brought you. It, so look, the last two weeks, it's you run had out. girls bringing you to dances. Man. That is why this guy is smooth. Usually uh, we have to bring them, but this guy has the look, one. Who, he said it, not me. The last two weeks, it's run out. Okay, yeah. it's the, the, the giant game in the Meadowlands. They should have won. He misses a couple wide open, especially for early on in the end zone. The other day, game should have been over. I forget who it was. Dropped the interception in the end right, zone. Right, right. He threw it as far as he could. Jahan Dotson made a heck of a play. <laughs> we all kind of look at us in the press box and say, well, maybe it's not going to run out. Maybe yeah. it's just uh, he's just going to be the horseshoe forever. Yeah. The fairy dust, whatever you want to call it. I think the key is can the, the Burgundy and Gold offensive line effectively protect the passer this week. And they've allowed eight sacks in the last two games. Yeah. Uh, two sack fumbles this past Sunday. Costing, that, basically taking anywhere from... 10 to 14 points. Oh, yeah. I mean, putting seven points on the board for the Giants and taking at least a field goal yeah. off the board for the Burgundy and Gold. Yeah. I I don't think that they can do that against this uh, Niners defense that is tied for seventh in the league in sacks. Yep. You know, say what you will as far as them being able to stop the run or whatever, they can get after the passer. And mm-hmm. with unless we get JD McKissick and he is not he is not playing for the rest of the season, That's his unless guy. they can get a safety valve guy out there. Who can be? I'd rather have Curtis Samuel catch those passes, Correct. the seven-yard pass yes. on third and five, uh, yeah. than have him run five times. I'm okay with yeah. them running once or twice, yeah. but no more than three stop, times. Stop with the no more than three times. Yeah, just yeah. One, once or twice, and if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's it's right. like the blackjack uh, player. You're you're already down fifty bucks. You're going back to a cold <laughs> table. You can't. You know, it's, the the cards were not in his favor. I think it ends this week uh, as far as the the magic. Um, for Taylor Heineke, I think they lose along the lines of uh, twenty-four to five. They get always, a safety. Always, always the weird. Wait, who picked seventeen eleven? That was week? me. That was him. That was me. So here, I wouldn't do that. Here, but what was the final? Twenty to twelve. Twenty to twelve. There. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. I got a text during the game. It says your guy on top picked seventeen eleven, but he picked the wrong. You picked the Washington, right? Commanders. Yeah. yeah. He says we picked the wrong, but seventeen eleven or seventeen. What was it? Eleven or twelve? I picked seventeen eleven, and when the Commanders went for two, it was there was a chance yes. for it to be okay. fourteen eleven. So that's what it was, yeah. and I said, "Oh my God, someone's yeah. listening." Hey, listening I had to- I had I had eight four in play <laughs> against the Bears, 
for at least a half, maybe three quarters. Uh, oh my They've god! They've been that bad. Uh, but no, but I think I do think it ends this week. I think that uh, you see a team like San Francisco. Yes, they clinched a, 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 the the division title last Thursday, but I think they have a chance to let whatever joy from clinching a playoff berth and the like, you know, settle. I think and it's Kyle too. And yes. Kyle's gonna I mean they're gonna I think he's win. gonna be yeah, mad. Yeah, and for this Trent, is not, yeah, this is not Trent, one that doesn't flies matter that under Bruce, the radar for it doesn't them. matter that Bruce Allen's going, you still have Dan Snyder. Little known fact no, he sees in the this colors. stat sheet right here it says the rest deficit reverse does not count when a team has to travel cross country, which Washington has to do this week. Because you're going back in time, yeah, right? Exactly. Going back <laughs> In theory, you're going back in I time because the game takes place at one. As a matter of fact, let, well, it's four let, o'clock let, here. Let's let's ask this question, and it's not because I'm bored, but because Ron Rivera himself. I mean, he was posed a question about making a potential quarterback change. Yes. Let's say the Heineke yeah. magic falls way off the rails in the first half. Let's say he throws four picks in the first half. You got to go to somebody uh, off the bench, and you're still in the game. Let's say he throws four picks, and it's only like a ten point deficit. Ten five, maybe. Wow. So you go to. Uh, <laughs> You do, do you go to Carson Wentz or do you put the rookie? He won't be out active. There. He's not, yeah. He won't but be active. I think I, I think you go. Here's, to, here, I, yeah. here's what. Call me crazy on this. I'm putting I'm putting Carson Wentz in bubble wrap for the rest of the year. You already know what you have in him. You know he's not mm-hmm. going to be back next year. Fine. But in San Francisco, you have to pull out all the stops. This is a game. I, this I is a game for all intents and purposes. You need to win. So. You need to hit them. You're not. You're not going to outsmart them necessarily. So you need to hit them with some stuff that they're not looking for. Okay. They're not looking for Sam Howell. Okay. So what are you going to? You're not going to have Carson Wentz active? No. No. Mm, I'm putting tough. him. First of all, I wouldn't have activated him right. from gotcha. injured reserve. So, I think. I think. So and, and I know that this is not something that they're going to do. But I'm saying yeah. going into a very important game, mm-hmm. where you need the element of the element of surprise is what's going to win you this game. A bunch of fluky stuff happening, turnovers. Maybe a uh, fake punt. Heineke, right. Heineke magic. Maybe a muff punt. Things like Maybe that. A safety. That's how you win this game. If you just line them up, Washington is outmanned, period. Because okay. of injuries, because of talent deficit, all of this. So, West if you, Coast. the only way you're going, right, exactly. So, the only way you're going to do it is if you get a lot of things bounce your way and the element of surprise. They're not looking for a rookie quarterback who you have no film on. And quite frankly, well, that's know. exactly who San Francisco's starting. Right. Brock Purdy's well, you basically would know the same that. guy. First of all, he's not. I mean, Wentz is his backup. Like he's already right. said it. Correct. But you would know if yeah. Wentz is not active and Hal's active, then they have then they they're thinking that. Right. They're not, but I see right, what right, you're right. saying. Yeah. I here here's my here's what I think. <clears throat> the you lose Saturday, then you have must wins. You're still not out. You're not out, but now you're relying on you have to be other and people falling You out. no longer control your path to the postseason. Not your or what? your destiny. Not your destiny. Your you, destiny. No one controls their destiny. Or your destiny. He was so, like you should have seen how mad he was yesterday. Whenever somebody says control your destiny, he loses it. He gets mad. It's great. It's my destiny. It's my destiny. Like, it's my destiny. It's like, I can't control it. I think if I could, it would Here's what's going to happen. They lose Saturday. Yeah. They are going to go to Carson, who hasn't played in 10 weeks. <laughs> and try and win two games to beat mm. Cleveland. Down yeah. At home. Okay. Okay. I, I think, think that's what's gonna. I think that's what's going to. Happen. I think if Here's they get I think, shot, I, I think they go to San Francisco. I think they win that game that nobody picks them yeah. to win, and then they d- lose, d- vomit, take a dump yeah. in the bed in uh, against Cleveland. Yeah. I think they. It, it, I think if they are shut out at the half. They will go with uh, Carson. He Wentz might in make the a change half. at that point. I think. I right. think you know something's got to if. But this because, has been a second half that, team, though. Right. But still, I think that if, if if they've got a goose egg on the board at the half and they have no third down conversions and <laughs> things are just not <laughs> right. running and maybe there's a turnover or two, then I, because I thought that they were close to replacing You could have argued him this week at halftime. Sunday night, After yeah. the strip sack <clears throat> fumble, you yeah. could have argued. And he wasn't doing anything, you know, really terrible behind the key. But yeah. it's just the spark thing for me. Right. The yeah. offense wasn't doing anything. And then they come out and have it. He calls a great drive. They get the touchdown drive. That where's that been? Yeah. And then you then you go away from. One him. feels like Wentz can win games for this team, but he can also lose games for this team. While Heineke might not necessarily be able to win games for the Burgundy and Gold, but he can prevent them from losing. Yeah. Remember the yeah. uh, the play, the uh, the high snap that he lost yeah. uh, against yeah. Philadelphia and then threw out of bounds. Wentz just falls on that or right. doesn't even get to it. 
and it's a Philadelphia, right. if, and Philly has great field position, and a burgundy and gold drive blows up. Yeah. So. All right, so I picked them to win. You picked them to lose. I think they're going to lose. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. If, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I don't yeah. know. This team doesn't get blown out. All right. And 24 Dave, to 5, and, they lose. And Dave That's a blowout. Picked a weird yeah. score for them to lose. And with, um, with Mike Shanahan <laughs> getting the game ball with, once again. Oh, my God. Wouldn't that be something? Um, it's coming. And then he chucks it into the owner's suite. As we, uh, as we wind down this episode, uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention, uh, before this taping, we uh, learned of the passing of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, and quite frankly, the NFL legend. Mm. Uh, yeah. um, Franco Harris. Franco Harris, thank you. Um, Welcome. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's one of those talents where you just say the first name and you know who you're talking about. And you know you you're you're a kid of the '70s, yeah. and you know you grew up watching them. Um, I I I've always had an affinity for the Steelers based on that history and yeah. just that run. But um, one play, which we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of, so it's the number it, one yeah. play in the NFL's I top mean, 100. The the, the immaculate reception was, right? changed the trajectory of that franchise, and I don't think that that's Big the time. least bit hyperbolic to say that. No, and I think you know before that uh, they did not win a playoff game in their 40-year existence. They hadn't yeah, even was appeared in technically playoff a playoff yeah. game, and it, when he arrived, uh, he gave them a running game, and he gave them something, some sort yeah. of magic, some intangible that they did not have. If you looked at him, he was either a quick fullback or a powerful halfback. He yeah. was a guy that really defied uh, description. And on, you know, for years after that, the Steelers scouts and Chuck Knoll tried to find somebody like him yeah. to put into that offense, whether it was Walter Abercrombie, who didn't amount to much, or uh, you know, Sidney Thornton. There were a lot of guys who... They, they said, well, he, he kind of has that Franco feel, but nobody could do what Franco what did, did, whether it was being a good pass blocker, whether it was being able to you know, uh, be an effective receiver. And, uh, and his quickness really matched the move to the artificial turf, too, at Three Rivers Stadium. He was a very quick back in their trapping offense, and he made big plays. Not just in that game, the Immaculate Reception, but he, had, uh, he, had, he scored four, super, uh, four touchdowns in the Super Bowl, the first one in Super Bowl nine for a young team that you know, had yet to shake off the Minnesota Vikings to, I think he, he scored the very last touchdown yeah. of that Super Bowl era in 1979. Uh, against the Rams that sealed yeah. that victory. He had a big TD against Hollywood Henderson and the Cowboys and perhaps what was the game of the decade, a 35-31 Steeler win in Super Bowl thirteen. And uh, for all that you can say about what a great player he was, a keystone to that franchise, pun not intended, he was an even better guy off the field, and he was one of those guys who stayed in the Pittsburgh area and yeah. really, you know, he, he had his own donut business, but he also did so many charitable works and did yeah. so many good works over his life. And uh, Coach Chuck Noll would always say, "It's time for these guys to find their life's work when they would re when he'd release them. Say, you know, hey, sorry, George, uh, we're going to release you, put you on waivers. <laughs> yeah. Time for you to find your life's yeah. work." Yeah. Yeah. Franco, after he left the Steelers, found his life's work, and it was pretty awesome. Yeah. And, and what, what an incredible life and what an incredible guy. And his, uh, his people of the world were less with him not here. Exactly. And, well said. Uh, and, op and absolutely, it's going to be uh, all about Saturday him night. on yeah. Saturday oh, night yeah. in mm -hmm. a game that was going to be all about him anyway. anyway they were going to so retire eerie. his jersey. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to retire this episode of the D.C. Sports Huddle. It's sponsored by MGM National Harbor. For the latest in Washington sports, visit MGM National Harbor and experience a sports fan's paradise. I am Rob Woodfork. This is Dave Preston, off to do a sportscast, and that is George Wallace. And we are breaking the huddle. <laughs>